Hello there, this is RTB for RTB TV, and welcome back to my channel, where today we're gonna enjoy ourselves with a little bit of scan against Buell, also known as Gang Tae Wan. This should be fun. I hosted this little series earlier today to have these two players meet up and see how they match up. They've played before, but the last time they played, Scan hadn't played fastest in about six or seven months, so he wasn't really in a great shape. Although he did play really well, but in the end, Buell won the previous set, so let's see who is gonna win this one. Scan is in a better shape, and I made them play Terran against Terran in the very first match, and after the first match, the loser gets to decide which races they play afterwards. But you can only play a race combination, a matchup, once. So you can play Terran against Zerk once, but you can still play Zerk against Terran once. I thought that was the most balanced way of combating the randomness of random versus random, or the imbalance of playing Protoss Terran against Protoss Terran against Protoss Terran. By starting off with an even matchup, Terran against Terran, because that's their main race. Both players start off with the same bowl order. Both players start off with Supply Depot, into Refinery, into Barracks, into Double Factor. Now a funny little thing that I just want to say, I actually already know what happens in the first six minutes, because I was casting, but I forgot to switch the scene to the actual game, so I was just, you know, casting with the overlay. Luckily I noticed before the game was over, but I know what's going to happen in the first six minutes. I'm going to try to cast it as if I don't know, but I do know. So don't act surprised if I'm, you know, predicting things that haven't happened yet, because I know that they're going to happen. Hopefully I don't. I'm going to try to keep this as, you know, I'm just going to act like I don't know. Triple factories from both players coming in. Both players with one Marine. Marines are scouting on the map. SV there gets in first. Scan has a little bit more minerals in the bank because he didn't scout with the SCV first. He went with the Marine first and followed up with the SCV. So he's got a couple more minerals in the bank and maybe that might turn into a slight difference between the two players. We've got a... F is this is Double Depot? Double Depot there on the way from Scan. Marines meet each other there. Who's going to win the fight? This Marine is on... 10 HP, this one is on 22. Vultures coming in there from the backside, though, they're gonna kill the Marine, but there's also the SCV there running into two Vultures, so both players lose their first unit at about 3.30 into the match. Vultures picking up the kills. Oh, we got an Armory coming in first for Buell, in fact. So we went Depot, Armory, or Scan went Double Depot, and that might just cue us in on what's gonna happen next. Scan goes for two more factors for a total of five, Whereas Buell is not building his 4th factory yet. Or his 5th. He can't afford a 5th one, so probably gonna be a 4th factory here. A lot of gas are in the bank. I think he's gonna queue up Goliath, because that's why he's got the armory. He sees that Stan has a lot of vultures, so he's going for Goliath, I think. Because Goliaths do very well against vultures. A vulture fight here happening on the middle, though. The fight looks to be going pretty well there for Buell. More vultures coming in from the backside there. Scan has a couple more vultures of his own joining the fight as well. Who's going to win this exchange? Looks like... Yo, Scan's last vulture coming in clutch to take out the last couple of those vultures. Doesn't kill the last one, though. So, two Vultures left there for Scan, one Vulture left there for Buell. Goliaths have arrived on the scene, level 1 attack is on the way there as well. Got speed on the way there for Scan. I don't see an Armory yet, I see once again he's building Double Depot. He's on one gas though. One gas, mining with one SCV, whereas Buell is now building a second gas and still mining with three SCVs there on the gas, and gets his first Command Center. That's the first big difference we're seeing here, aside from the Goliaths. Now, this is a lot of Goliaths, this means a lot of Vultures. Fighting against a very small amount of Goliaths. Even though the Goliaths are stronger than Vultures, the numbers are just so heavily in advantage of Scan here that Scan wins the fight without much effort. Now he goes across the map and tries to sneak in, but no, he can because there's a wall there in the front. Goliaths blocking up the entrance. Double Depot with four Goliaths in between. Those Vultures are never gonna get in. Adding on machine shops now. Scan also adding on a second machine shop. He's getting mines. He's gonna mine at the place all around everywhere. Goliath going into the middle, picking the fight there with the vultures as more Goliaths leaving the base there. That's about seven Goliaths against, I think, about nine or so vultures. Nine vultures it is. Well, 
9, now it's like 13. Who's gonna win this fight? Is it gonna be the Vultures or always oh, blazing the mines? It's not gonna go in for the fight there though. A couple of Vultures get picked off really quickly. Those Goliaths just tore through those Vultures without effort. He started stepping forward tiny, tiny little bits to trigger the mines and kill them with the attack speed of the Goliaths. I really like that little movement. This is really smart. It's risky because if you overstep, Goliath do take a mine hit. But he's always doing this so well. He's doing that so well. Thanks finishing up there in the back for Scan. Though he's got a Starport finish as well. The Starport on the way for Bjol there too. And a third command somewhere on the way as well. And is this an academy? That's an academy. He's gonna get Scan upgrade. I don't see an armory. F Wait, there's the armory for Scan. There's the academy for Scan. Only on two commands, he's not getting a third one yet. Lifts up one of his factories just to relocate it, not really to do anything other with it. Got nice buildings all over the map there for vision. He sees everything leaving the base there. He's going to build a sub engineering bay here as well to narrow the entrance point. Level 1 attack almost finishing up there for Bjol. The level 1 attack for Bjol gives him a huge advantage over Scan. Scan has no upgrades for his mech at the moment. Tanks there standing behind the Goliaths getting Siege Mode. Siege Mode for Bjol will finish first. But Scan currently has more units, but his Vultures are significantly weaker than anything Bjol has here on the middle. Goes out into the middle. He's going to try to fight. The level 1 attack is finished for Bjol. The fight here really going into the favor of Bjol really, really fast. Even though Scan has 4 tanks, those 4 tanks don't make up for the difference or the weakness of the Vultures into tanks and Goliaths. So Bjol gets himself control over the middle before Scan is even allowed to really use the difference in tanks to establish his own line of control over the middle or over the entrance here into the pathway. Dropship finish there for Bjol. That's very, very fast. Scan doesn't have his own dropship yet, but he's finishing up within a couple of seconds. Couple of Goliaths there in the back to defend against a drop and a drop ship. So he's specifically building and preparing himself for that. Looks like Bjol is doing the exact same thing, keeping a couple of his Goliaths there back at home, running back and forth, got turrets on the sides as well, and he's got a vision on the sides, just in case. Tank there, gonna go up onto the hill. It's not. It turns around, flies away. Changed his mind. Dropship from Scan there, filled up with a couple of Vultures, tries to make its way into Bjol's base, but he's just gonna fly into turrets once again. He's gonna try to unload there on the side. He starts to unload. Vultures though, four Vultures make the wing, starts placing mines, but the mines are within detection range, and he's gonna have to go for the back there, kills an SCV, he's gonna kill another one there in the backside, he's gonna try to kill another one. Dropship comes in at the same time from Bjol, Scan is not responding to it, tanks are sieging up, tanks are very strong, tanks are shooting onto the SCVs, kills about six or seven of them, maybe even killed ten of them in total. He's gonna try to kill one more, but he goes down before it shoots his last shot. So third command center there on the way for Scan and Bjol currently in the lead with 3 supply difference, 9 SFVs more, 12 SFVs more, the supply lead is going to keep growing and growing because he's simply richer and richer than Scan is. His economy is great and his upgrades are better as well. Both players have their Goliath um, Karen boosters on the way, getting more vision on the sides. He's moving units into position to start killing structures and the SCV. Dropship there, he gets caught out by a turret, but a turret doesn't really do too much damage. So it's okay. This one vessel flying all around the map. Dropship flying around the same pathway. Bill knows that because he's got this barrack here, that there's an open way into Scan's base on the bottom side. He's gonna try to use it really, really well. Triple tank there in the front to keep Scan faint when his base is one of the few things you see in TBT. A couple of tanks can easily keep the Terran contained. Vessel didn't spot the tank. Tank flying towards the front there. Ooh, we got dropships from Bjol leaving as well. He's gonna unload on top of the barracks. We're gonna try to kill it. Spots and scares away the tank. Uh, the dropship from Scan there turns around. Another dropship there trying to join up with his friends. So it's about basically the same setup. Two tanks, four Goliaths. Four Goliaths. Two tanks. Gonna pick a fight there. Gonna surround the tank. Gets the tank really quickly. Now Bjol unloading his own tanks there on the drop next to it. Scan focus on the drops, gonna try to take down the dropships. Vessel is still flying across the bottom side of the map. Dropship there goes into Bjol's base at the same time. Gonna try to roll up closer and closer towards the SCVs and get a shot up on the SCVs, but the tanks there that just spawned take down Scan's tanks without much issue whatsoever. 
So upgrades now also hitting 1, 0. Spiel is almost a level 2 attack, a level 1 armor. He definitely has the definitive lead in the upgrade department. Also has more factories, more starports than Scan. Scan is on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, factories, triple starport there, although not yet finished. Fest is still there hanging on the bottom side. He sees the turrets being made, so he's gonna have to move fast. He's gonna have to move soon. Level 2 attack is finished there for Buell. Really fast little attack upgrade there. Another Fessel there on the top side, moving across the top side of the map. Gonna maybe go for a double radiate attempt. Gonna move, reposition himself a little bit. Dropships there from B Scan, can't get in. There's too many turrets here on the top side. Goliath there as well, gonna take down those Goliaths. Now we've got a Fessel coming in from the bottom side. Gonna go for the radiate, nothing to defend against the radiate. It's a pretty good hit off. A lot of SCVs going down, That yet this is a very painful hit there. Loses a lot of SCVs there, although Scan managed to save most of his own SCVs by killing the radiated SV with the Goliaths. Tesla coming in from the top side didn't make its way in. It was a pretty sweet move, killing his own SCP that was radiated with the Goliaths to make sure the others don't go down. But now his SCVs are low HP, so a repeat attempt might hurt him quite a bit. Now this is a lot of units there on the middle. As if tanks from the high ground. Gonna relocate a couple more tanks. He's getting scanned. Bill goes in there on the top. They're gonna unload wherever he can. Wherever he can. He's going straight into the backside there. Scan is lagging behind a little bit. Not being fast enough there with the response towards the backside. Tanks unloading there on the bot. Ooh, this is a very good spot to unload. Tank is shooting on his tanks though. He's gonna shoot. Scan comes in closer. Scan tries to fight them off. He's gonna successfully fight them off though, but he's gonna lose some of his units for sure. This one definitely hurt him a little bit. Bill now has the upper hand. Also has a lot of tanks around the middle that he can just pick up because he didn't lose his dropships and he can unload them wherever he wants to. Took down two tanks up on the high ground as well. So Scan has lost the high ground superiority. That's a lot of tanks up on the high ground. Six tanks up on the high ground. Loses most of them, but three of them stay alive. This one's gonna go down as well, takes that one down. But these two still alive are being a problem for Scan because now this tank here in the front Gonna get taken down, and now he's lost control over this section. Gonna have to pick up his own units, put them off to the high ground, and basically sacrifice his own units by to take down these two. Bill has a huge lead at the moment. The work count is about the same, but the supply difference is about 22. More starports in the way there for Bill. He's in about 8 factories now, 5 command centers, getting more armories as well. So upgrades are in a great place. Scan is still behind on upgrades, got level 1. Attack, zero armor, two attack, one armor for Bjol there, a huge, huge difference, specifically in the tank against tank battle. It just makes a huge difference to have more upgrades, specifically for armor on your tanks. I was going to load on the bottom side hill as well, but if anything that can kill this, so now he gets control over this section. The starport there are going to have to be loaded and lifted up into the air, and it will have to try and get his own tanks to kill these tanks somehow. Goes forward, his Goliath as a sacrifice. But Beal handles this really well. Barrack there on the bottom side, gonna get taken down by this Goliath very soon as well. More units. Oh, he's got such a good production. Scan now in 77 SCVs. He's very rich, but can't really spend it all fast enough. He's trying his best though. But now we've got about 9 dropships. Everything is being filled up with something. Well, not everything. This one is empty. Yes, that one is empty. He's gonna go in. Where can he unload? He has a huge supply, 50 supply difference. That's huge, huge difference. Gonna land next to the hill there on the bottom side, next to the factories and the star force. He's gonna get control over this area. Once he has control over this area, the game is gonna become much more difficult than it already is. But the tanks there, oh, radiates coming down, radiates taking all down. Oh, painful. Goodbye, SCDs. And that pretty much is the game, in my opinion. It was a great radiate to have those dropships go along with the drops, uh, with, to have those vessels go along with dropships and then fake out, make a misdirectional move and go straight for the SCVs. Just so wound up being the exact thing we had to do to secure the win. Scan, it was just difference in optimization. Scan went for more vultures. Bill countered it with a great Goliath switch. And now we have one win there for Bill. No wins for Scan. The score is 0 to 1 in favor of Bill. Let's go for game number 2. Let's see what happens in game number 2. 
Scan lost the first match, so he can pick and decide what match number two's match or race matchup is going to be. And he has decided to go for Terran against Zerk. Bill here on the brown Zerk. On the bottom right corner of the map. Whereas Scan here on the top side, on the top left side. On the other side of the map. So this is going to be a very... This is probably going to be a long game. There's a lot of difference, a lot of distance, I mean, between where the two players are on the map. And that's going to really give Zerk, in my opinion, the advantage. Whoever is defending in this situation has the advantage. Just because there's so much distance between the two bases. Scan starts off with a barrack and a supply depot. Usual stuff. Buell goes for a double hatchery, non-choke build order, and scouts with a drone. Gets a pool after double hatchery and gas at 9 supply. 10 supply, 9 drones, 10 supply. So one of the drones still on the way. Scan is a pretty good TVZ player, but Gil is a very smart Zerg against Terran player. He's got very well planned out optimized build orders. He's, he's got a great sense of how to play out every single situation that he's put into. Will it be enough against Scans, Terran against Zerk? Double Barracks, Academy on the way there, on the backside. Drone finds, probably finds the location Scan is at, he doesn't quite know, but he's gonna assume of course that there's two Marines in there, this is probably where Scan is on the map. It's safe to assume. Unless it be there, gets into the backside there, Sunken is on the way, Sunken finishes just in time, gonna kill the SCV. He goes down, Blair is on the way. I actually like this configuration quite a bit. This one sunken protects everything here. Just one sunken to protect everything for now. But there's no danger of being exposed to any marine attacks early on yet. It means you're gonna need medics, gonna need range, and they're gonna need stim, the most important upgrade that Scan can get. Scan saving up minerals there for a second command center. Only on two barracks, he's playing is very, very conservative by only getting two barracks in this cross map situation. He's not going to apply any serious pressure onto Bjol. Bjol, just to be sure, adds on another creep colony, getting another sunken, and this is, of course, a hatchery. Also, getting his highlights then to match up with the lair finishing timer. The perfectly match up. Watch it. Okay, not perfectly. It's about a second difference, but you know, it's good enough. It's basically as good as it gets. More sunkets on the way as well. He sees the Overlord sees and spots the Marines coming in there. Scan's gonna try to open up something here on the side. Overlord trying to escape out the hill. It will do so just in time. It won't. It will. The Overlord gets away. Barely though. Barely, 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 barely though. It gets away. Now, interesting little detail here. He's got a drone there on the top corner. He was using it to scout earlier, but now he's keeping it here outside of Scan's vision. Let's keep our eye on the drone there on the top side because he might turn it into a hatchery for a Nidus Canal later on into the game. Or you have a Queen's Nest on the way there for a Buell. It's very fast. Lurker Aspect also on the way. Zerking Speed also on the way. Scan tries to go in, but there's so many Sunkins. He's not going to work. He's going to try to get his fire bat onto the drones. Drones are running away to safety. He gets two drone kills. Maybe three. He, oh, oh, he almost got the entire stack of drones there. There could have been very disastrous. But in the end, he only gets about six or five drones killed with the firebats. A worthy attempt that could have ended the game. It could have ended the game, but Buell with a fast reaction, fast response, keeps most of his drones alive. He did lose some, but not all of them, which is, of course, what matters. The 26 SCVs against 23 drones. Bunker there being built in the front to prevent a Zerkling mass attack from happening. I think Lurker Aspect is finished because we don't lo I no longer see it on the upgrade tab there on the top corner. Marine attack level 1 on the way there for Scan and he's going for mass barracks. 5 barracks in total. Factory's finished, Starquad is on the way. He's going for basically a normal map build order where you go for a lot of barracks, bio ball against the, ter the Zerk's options. It's, it's a great viable option, but will it really be effective against the lurkers that are coming in from Buell? That's what I'm wondering. 
Start to build some turrets left and right. You're gonna go in there with the SCV to tank the first shot, or is he keeping it backside there? Goes in with the Marines, gonna try to take down something number one. Takes down something number one. Takes it down. Lurkers are on the way though, and killing the Lurker X with Marine shots is not very effective. He's gonna try to kill something number two, kill something number two. Now he walks backwards a tiny little bit. He's gonna keep his Marines on this one Lurker. Tries to kill it. He walks away just in time. Burrows it up. Very good, very good play there from Buell. Goes on a scan, kills one lurker. Marines are just outside of lurker distance, just outside of the spine range. Two more lurkers finish up. They're gonna burrow up. Gonna try to take one of them down, but no, can't do it. You're gonna have to enter the bunker. Enters the bunker just in time. Gonna keep repairing it. I think. Ooh, this is nice. I like this. The Zerf is coming into the backside there, ready to take down the bunker to prevent the repair from keeping it alive. Marines are running away to safety, but he gets to surround on the Marines. Marines coming into the backside there, entering the fray. Kind of. Oh, great exchange there. Great exchange, very clutch play there from Bjol, very accurate play from Scan there as well, great scan use, great bunker use as well, he really managed to get the most out of that, but Bjol prevented any more serious harm by keeping the very first worker alive, that could have turned out very differently, very differently, honestly, trust me. So Burrow's on the way, raiding on the way there for Scan, getting a vessel and building some turrets, so next in his base and on the side of his base. I kind of like this one turret there. It gives him a lot of vision. I like it. So he's finally getting more gas. He's got... He's adding on two more barracks. He's going for seven barracks in total. We already have the defiler mount here in the backside for Buell. So I'm not sure if the Marines... The seven barracks is really going to work that well. I really feel that he should focus more on advanced technology. He goes in from the side. They're going to try to kill the defiler mount, but he's forced to retreat because lurkers are protecting the fighter mount maybe he can fight another thing to kill lurkers going in marines go oh zerking marines going in but vessel arrives on the scene just in time he micro backwards just in time to prevent any damage <coughs> oh bill goes in there's too many marines there though the lurkers though do deal some bad serious damage but scans puts up his marines really well keeps most of his marines alive and the vessel providing detection Radiate coming down there on the, on the Lurker as well. Oh no, we've got two Scorches. And down the Vessel goes. Supply difference is pretty big, but supply difference doesn't really matter all that much because Lurker tech is so specific against Marines. Marines really have a hard time against it. So now he has to wait for another Vessel. Does he have one somewhere on the map? It's still under production, so he's gonna have to wait a little bit longer than he wants to before we can attack. Which is going to give Biol enough time to get consumed and a defiler. The fighter already finished consume, also already finished. Which means he's gonna maybe push forward a little bit, but pushing forward might be a little bit dangerous because he got so few units. Dark Swarm comes down, he gets one lurker. Another Dark Swarm scans the bits of its army. Out of the Dark Swarm, very well microed. Burrows up his units under the Dark Swarm, relocates the lurker into the second Dark Swarm to minimize the possible options that Scan can walk through. Two more lurkers on the bottom side there, scans them. Both lurkers go down. Zerkings entering the Dark Swarm. Scan has to leave the Dark Swarm. Puts the Zerkings in hold position under the Dark Swarm. Very well played. Lurkers are morphing. Gets another consume. Level 1 melee attack on the way. Plague is also on the way. And Carapace also on the way. Scan has level 1 armor and level 2 weapon. Four Marines both on the way. Starts taking down, ooh, starts taking down the Overlord, but there's a Defiler throws down the Dark Swarm, the workers are entering the Dark Swarm, there's tanks there behind the Dark Swarm that are, oh, this is so well played there from Bill. Such a tight, difficult situation there. Lurker gets into the Dark Swarm, survives the tank blast, and gonna take down everything there in the bottom corner. Maybe Scan can still escape, maybe he won't. Yeah, really well played there. Really well played there from Bill. Even though he's at half the supply, he's managing to keep himself alive and secure his most important infrastructure buildings or technology structures. However you want to call it, he manages to keep the damage at an absolute minimum. Also lost some lurkers, lost some zerklings, but he kept his most important stuff alive. Another great dark swarm there, pushes forward, marines can't shoot into the dark swarm, so force the retreat once again. Moving into the top right corner. Goes forward with the Fessel, radiates the Defiler. Oh no, Scorch to take down the Fessel. There's no more detection here on the scene. Now he's gonna have to rely on his scans. He does have one scan. He's got two more commandments on the way. 
eight barracks. This is a lot of barracks. Getting a lot of factories now as well, but I don't think the Marines are really going to create plague as well. It's going to drain all the medic energy for at least a little while. It's going to allow him to push forward a little bit closer. It's like killing Marines there. Great, great couple kills there. It goes back in with the Marines. The Marines being a low HP are going to go down to this for sure. Although I do see Lurker. Yeah, okay. Dark Swarm comes in just in time. One, Lur one Marine out of that group survives. Buell pushing back scan. Tiny bit by tiny bit. And the very heavy reliance on Marines is backfiring on scan here. Because now we've got so many Marines. That can't really do much. Goes forward once again, gets the Dark Swarm down, Lurkers inside the Dark Swarm, Marines are escaping into the top right corner, but they're getting boxed in by basically all the Lurkers. He kills a lot of them, but they're boxed in. Nowhere to go, and he's pushing out towards the choke point. He secured the choke point, Scan has lost it. Scan has lost the choke point, now Buell has a lot of freedom. The one thing I'd like Scan to do here, though, is try to go for a Radiant on the drones because he hasn't tried it yet and there's actually no drone protection in the back there. He does have Burrow, but just having to Burrow those drones and lose mining time is a huge, huge loss for Buell. He will lose so much minerals during these crucial times of being at half the supply of Scan. It will make a huge difference. Both players have a lot of upgrades on the way. More vessels are arriving on the scene. How many vessels does he have? Starports? A huge row of starports there on the side. Huge row of starports there. It's going to be about five starports. He's getting about 12 factories, still on eight barracks, continuously producing marines with their pretty good upgrades. One, two. Tanks are on zero, zero. Does he have armory? He's got triple armory there. Didn't, didn't get a fourth one. Fill a command center there to fill out the last little bit of supply space and hover them over the map. Sending out a lot of his SCVs to the side to start building turrets to. Try and contain Beol, but Beol there, he had the drone from earlier, turned into a hatchery, built a Nidus Canal, and he's going to try and just completely ignore the containment, and just go for a small little backstab attack straight from an angle where Scan is not expecting it. There he goes, he's going to intercept some units on the middle there, actually inter being interested. Ooh! Intercepting those units does give away the fact that, that Buell has a proxy base somewhere. He gets there just in time. Lurker's getting into the Dark Swarm. He's gonna split up Scan's army. Scan also already sending units towards the suspected location of the Nidus Canal. He knows exactly what's going on just by experiencing the situation. But there's so many units getting into Scan's base there. Two Lurkers going towards the backside there. He's gonna try to kill some SCVs. Scan's Marines are spawning. As if he's aren't running away. Lurkers are in the backside. Both players aren't really paying attention to the backside there. They're focused on the front side where a lot of Lurkers are under a Dark Swarm and some Marines and Zel... Just look at them. Neither player is aware of this here in the backside. This could have just ended... Bill could just end the game there if he knew those two Lurkers were in the backside there. But he isn't even aware of them. He isn't even noticing them. Scan has noticed them, I think. Oh my god, this is hilarious. Neither player focused on the backside there, even though that is a game-ending situation with the, with the lurkers there on the scene. Looks like Scan survives the fight there in the front. He did just slow. Oh, he looked at the lurker. He's losing SCDs. SCDs are running away just in time. Oh, he knows that one so late. Oh my god. This is something you almost never see at a game of this level, where two lurkers are standing next to the SCDs and neither player notices until it's too late. That's just so rare. That's just such a rare thing to happen. That aside, you'll try and break through the middle, not succeeding. Scan cleans out the proxy base. Scan supply lead is huge. Guardians switch coming in there from Scan though. And Scan only has Marines and a couple of vessels. Not a lot of vessels. I see one vessel and a couple of vessels there back at home. But the Guardians are already on the attack, flying into turret range. Because for some reason, even though Guardians have more range than turrets, they still fly into the range of the turrets. For some reason, not sure why, but that's just the way the game works. So Goliath Hydralisk it is. Or is it Goliath Zergling? Bottom line being, Buell is getting stronger and bigger. And he's not planning on giving Scan any more time to go bigger and bigger. 
itself. Well, scan is pretty much already at maximum size, maximum supply, maximum income, maximum upgrades on the way as well. He's rolling on full capacity. Now, there come the Scorches after the Fessels have radiated the Guardians. The Scorches take down the Fessels. The Fessels serve their purpose, but Scan still has to break through this front portion, which he cannot do without a Radiate, because he needs a Radiate to kill those lurkers, because they're going to get protected by a Dark Swarm very soon, unless Scan manages to somehow catch Buell of Guard. But Buell is very vigilant with this frontal portion. He's never going to lose those three lurkers buried up there in the front, unless he makes a mistake. Right? Right? Scan playing very defensive. Not taking any risks. A lot of marines that he can't do much with. He's got such a tight build, the Sim City here. Buell feels he's got to he feels he got to go. Gets the Dark Swarm, gets the Lurkus underneath. He snipes to the Fiver there with his tanks though. Great move. Also unloaded a couple of Zergs here on the side to take out some turrets. Took down a couple of them, but couldn't take out more. The scan quickly reacts with the mobility of the Marines to take out those Zerglings. Here in the front, it looks like we're in a little bit of an impasse because scan can't really move forward much. He has to radiate the Lurkers or wait for the Dark Swarm to end. He's going to radiate the Lurkers instead of waiting for the Dark Swarm to end. He's going to move a little bit further forward, looking for something. Is there something here that I can do with my Vessels? Gets radiates on the lurkers below the dark swarm. We've got three lurkers in there. We've got all three of them radiated. Ooh, this is actually his best chance to move forward. If he goes now, if he goes now, he can basically end the game here. But he has to go now. Lurkers are being morphed. Guardians are coming in though. So perhaps I was wrong, the Guardians are going to keep those tanks away, so even if the tanks rolled up and set up shop there right in the choke point, they wouldn't have much to do, because the, tank, the, the Guardians would have taken them down. There's no anti-air on the scene at the moment, except for Marines, and vessels with no energy for radiates. A couple Zerglings there underneath the Dark Swarms, Beyond the Splendor is very well, distracting Scan on the sides, preventing him from moving into the base. Even though, realistically, he's got the chance, but he's got so much supply in Marines, and nothing in anti-air that he can't really progress forward. He has a chance to do it now though, but Buell is growing very quickly. Buell is going very quickly and Scan seems to be a little bit lost. He's going for a very strong focus on control. Like going for a very strong focus on map control, he's giving Buell the opportunity to fortify himself, grow big, grow strong, grow rich, maybe even to a point or Scan won't be able to keep up with the Zerg's production ability and the diversity of Buell's methods of attack that he's opening himself up for. Once again, goes for a slight little harassment on the side there. Slight little harassment on the side. Overlord's coming in as well, gonna elope them there on the side. There's most likely Zerg's in there. He's gonna try to clear out this entire section. A couple of hiders as well. Tanks are microing backwards, we've got the radiates coming down on the Guardians, vessels are retreating behind the marine line, scores are flying straight into the marines and all of them do lose their lives. But this is a pretty good fighting force there, clearing out a lot of turrets that Scan painstakingly put down, but the marines coming in do save the day. That's the one upside these marines do have, even though they are not useful in attacking anymore, they're still useful in Securing these sides from those unit drops that Bill keeps using to buy himself time. But Scanner really has to move forward with his tanks. He really has to press forward. He has to set up his tanks closer towards the, the sides here, even up on the hill, and start pushing forward. He's doing a great job containing, but he's not pushing forward. And Bill now on a lot of hatcheries. A lot of spores on the side, so radiates on the drones are becoming painstakingly, exceedingly more difficult. Also, he can move, scan moves forward, but just a little bit too late because workers finish at just in time. He gets the plague down there as well on a couple of vessels, but not all the vessels. But the workers get under the dark swarm, and now scan can move forward. He's gonna try to move forward a little bit. Not gonna try. He put down the dark swarm there to move his workers forward. A little bit too hard to go forward indeed. 
gets a great radiate on his own Valkyrie. He's gonna hunt down those drones, but the drones have burrow. Not a lot of minerals in the bank there for Bjol, but he's got enough to stay alive for now. He's gonna have to take down those Valkyries though, but the plague on the Valkyries did a great job. Guardians in the front there pushing forward, taking down the tanks. There's no anti-air here at the scene at the moment. He just used all of his radiates on those Valkyries. Bill is not getting money anymore, but neither can Scan kill those Guardians. So this situation overall is pretty good for Bill. More Valkyries flying across the map. Goliath's in the making, finally in the making. He's finally switching away from those Marines. I think he should have done it way earlier. The he, he hung onto the Marines way too long and missed the time window where he can go for some real painly attacks on Bjol. Now Bjol honestly rooks. He doesn't have that many hatcheries, but he's got enough hatcheries, got all the technology he needs, and he's got pretty good upgrades as well. Max out upgrades on the Hydras, on the Zerglings, uh, not on the Guardians, they only have two Carapace. Scan is on 2 2 for pretty much everything air, ground, and sea. Game is looking difficult here for Scan. Starts clearing out the map, hunting for Overlord left and right. Another unload there on the bottom side to clear out. Ooh, he's got some Ultimates in there. So yeah, these units are gonna get taken down. These might get taken down as well. He's relocating his army to start taking care of these. But because he's moving his units away from this pathway, you might actually see Bio leave through the front door. You might see him leave through the front door. As soon as he sees how many units are moving down into this corner of the middle spawn base. Great Valkyrie might go there, but so many Scorches coming in to try and kill the Valkyries. The Valkyries do kill almost all of the Scorches though. But I do think a lot of Fesses went down. This one is so strong. Maxed out upgrades on that Ultralisk. Look at how little damage it takes from the Goliaths. This is insane. Pretty much takes no damage at all. Pretty much takes no damage at all. So Bill here has reached maximum production capacity, maximum supply capacity, maximum income capacity, maximum everything. Once again, a low tuner on the bottom corner, being very annoying, keeping Scan's attention away from pushing to the front door. And Bill is not gonna even let him if he did, because he keeps uh, dark swarming those lurkers in the front there to keep Scan from moving in. Scan is basically running behind on the fence. He's trying really hard to have a leading hand in what happens, but Yol is playing is really well. He's keep distracting, slowly pushing Scan backwards on the sides, keeping Scan from pushing through the middle slowly dictating the pace of the game. Valkyries protect the vessels. Now Guardians moving to the top side. It's, it's, it's small little bits of army moving out every single time. And using his overlords to drop some units on the sides. Have Scan run left and right. He's keeping Scan occupied with honestly pretty smart, small scale gameplay. I like this a lot. It's not the massive size gameplay we tend to see in Fastnet. It's small scale, back and forth attacks on different locations. Moving out there with the Overlords. Ooh, Valkyries don't get a shot up on the Overlords before they unload. This is a lot of Ultralisks, a lot of Lurkers there on the side. This pretty much means that Bjol can take complete control over this entire side portion. A lot of radius coming down on the ultra list of the tanks on the backside. The filer didn't get a great dark swarm. Pretty much a useless dark swarm. That's a great dark swarm. The tanks gonna have to relocate outside of the dark swarm. Otherwise, the ultra list are just gonna kill everything. Now some the bars coming into the mix as well. Now we got guardians joining as well. This is a great combination of units that Beal is utilizing here. And he's using them really well. He's using them really smartly. Scan force retreat into the middle. Slowly losing ground. He's lost his entire right side portion of the map, which he had control over. He regained control over the bottom side of the map there on the south side, but losing this right side control is important. Also, his anti air options are simply no longer cutting it. 
He pretty much only has Radiates to deal with the Guardians, but he ran out of Radiates because he used them on the Ultralisks. Landed some units there inside of Peel's base though. Tanks up on the high ground. This is great. This is great. This is actually the first great advancement Scan has managed to make in the last 16 minutes. So this is great. But the Guardians coming in from the top side there after clearing out the right side of the map are now taking out the middle choke point here. The pathway is now falling into the hands of Buell as Scan is slowly losing everything. Although the Goliath is coming in there to save the day, gonna get a flank onto the Guardians though. That's still running away to safety. We've got more drafters coming in there. Not sure what's in there. But they're going here, and they're going to unload some stuff there somewhere here inside of Bjol's base. He lost control over the hill there as well, but he was regaining control here. Although the one lurker there being very annoying, but now he's leaving the base. He's going with a full frontal mass attack of lurkers. The fighters, great unit combination. Guardian still being annoying there on the side. Scan is almost no units on the map itself, because they're all inside of those dropships, I think. They're actually empty. I'm wrong, but still a lot of supply in dropships. That's 10 dropships, that's about uh, 40, 20 supply in dropships. But Bjol has managed to finally push his way into the middle of the map. The Dark Swarm protecting the Lurkers, the, the Fighter went down, one Guardian still there on the side being annoying. A lot of Guardians here entering the bottom part of the map. A lot of Guardians. With full carapace upgrades and oh, almost full carapace upgrades level 1 attack. More units entering the middle of the map. Zerglings gonna have to stay away for now. The Dark Swarm ends, but there's no detection at the moment present on the middle to kill the lurkers. Has our move in position, uses his scan instead. Father comes in just in time to protect the last two lurkers. Tesla's coming in to take down the Guardians at the bottom side. It's a lot of radiates. It's a lot of radiates there, but on the middle of the map, because Zerglings coming in to kill everything that's here. A lot of tanks are though in the middle, but he's not yet completely sieged up. But more Guardians coming in as well. Scorcher on the chain, he's got a great flake off on the vessels. Fellow trying to dodge the Scorcher, but not succeeding. And now we're gonna have a very... Ooh, it gets... Oh, that Dark Swarm there with the two Lurkers is absolutely essential. In not losing control that he fought so hard for here on the middle. Now Scan is gonna have to pull back tiny bit by tiny bit. Uploading his units into the dropship. He's gonna try to go for an all-in drop attempt. But right as he's going for an all-in drop attempt, we see a massive stream of ultralisks, circlings, the fighters, everything you can imagine that a Zerg can build going across the map. And he's got pretty much nothing inside of his base here. He miscalculated the situation. They have to pull his units back, but he's got almost no units anywhere to be seen. They're all in production. He's got a lot of Valkyries in the air though, but Valkyries only good against those two guardians there. Whereas it's mostly hopeless lurkers and zerklings moving across the map. Dark Swarm there, he's moving forward, deeper into the backside. Oh, oh no, the ultimate is in the backside. He gets a reading on the Defiler. Defiler gets a Plague on the main. Oh, beautiful, beautiful job there. Plague on the command center. Plague on everything. Scan is losing the main. He's trying to repair it. Radiant on the lurker. Oh, the ultimate is radiant, but oh no, now he's losing his. SCVs there very quickly to the radiate. Oh no, the radiate on the SCVs killed them so quick. Now the Zerglings are assisting, and now the units coming into the front door. So many lurkers breaking through. The scan, the, the game just went south really, really fast. Scan with one big miscalculation with his units inside the dropship. Everything goes south, and the game is over. That's a win for Bill after 29 minutes of very well played misdirectionalism. I'm not even sure if that's the word, but he was kept misdirect. He kept um, using misdirection tactics to keep Scan from attacking the front door when Scan had the opportunity to do so. Very great play from Gil. And a couple of missed opportunities there from Scan. Sally he had the game in his hands, but it slowly slipped out of his grasp as the game continued. So now we're going through game number three. Scan, having lost again, gets to decide which races they're gonna play, and we're gonna go into a Protoss against Terran. I've got a great feeling about this one. Hope I don't jinx it. Bill here, Terran expert on the Terran. Scan, Terran expert here on the Protoss. Green Protoss, purple Terran. Usually these games between these two, Protoss against Terran, 
wind up being pretty amazing. What is Bjorn going to do? Is he going to go for a mech opening? Or is he going to go for a more traditional barrack opening? It's a mech opening. He's going for the mech attack. He's going to have a snack and a mech attack. You're going to go for a double whopper. Double flopper, whopper. Ooh, what's this? Scan is going for a gas first. Is, is, is he going Dragoons? This is, it looks like the opening of a Dragoon build order where you go pile on gas and then gateway and then you pull three ropes to the gas then you wait for enough minerals for a gateway another gateway, you get three gateways in total cyber core and then you will have enough minerals and gas for triple Dragoon and one singularity charge on the menu. That's what I think he's going for. It's pretty good against the mech opening, but it requires very precise timing and multitasking. And it is easier to defend than to attack. What? He, he, he's not going for fast Dragoons? That's a very fast cyber core. He's now adding on two more gateways though, but he's this isn't the usual fast Dragoon build order. Because the Cyber Core is going to finish before these two gateways do. And he won't be able to queue up triple Dragoon all at the same time. Yeah, the gateways are pretty far behind. Maybe he's going for Dark Templars. Maybe he's going for something else. I'm not sure. But he's going for something tricky. He's trying something tricky. And I'm not sure if trying tricky stuff is the correct option at the moment. He still hasn't found Bjol yet, so he doesn't really know if Bjol is going for build order A, B, or C, maybe even D. And he's gonna have a max surprise on his doormat, one he didn't order, when the vultures and maybe even the tanks are gonna come across the map. Singularity charge now on the way, got two dragoons, three dragoons queued up. Hmm. These dragoons are way slower than they would usually be. One dragoon is out of the map. Usually you would have triple dragoon finished now. And the timing of those triple dragoons coming out only just now might just give Bjol too much breathing room. Bjol now has a bunker there coming up in the front. He saw the bull order from Scan. Scan managed to keep his citadel of a dune hidden in the top bottom corner there. So the trickery might just do the trick and get in the win here. But so far, this build order from Scan is very spicy. I haven't really seen anyone do this before, but he must have a pretty good idea of what he has to do to make this build order work. But it's one that stands and maybe even falls on trickery. Robo on the way. Dragoons are moving into the middle of the map. You don't have mines yet. He's going straight into siege mode and siege tank. Not getting mines. Most of the time we see mines, Scan doesn't go for the mines. Scan wall of his entrance here though. Great wall off so the boulders can't get through. The goons are trying to break through into the base, but the marines inside the bunker are keeping those great SCV controller as well. Bjol with the vultures on the middle saw the goons coming, which allowed him to move SCVs into this small little portion there to keep the goons from entering the base. Those dragoons inside the base would have been a lot of trouble also using his tank range to scare those dragoons away. You don't need siege mode. You can just use the superior tank range, which is slightly bigger and greater than dragoon range to scare them away with a little bit of poking and attacking. And Scan pulls away wisely so. Now Scan there is putting all of his technology down in the bottom corner. He's got a Temple Cycle on the way there as well. He's got Warmer Nexus on the way now too. Double Nexus on the way, going for triple Nexus in total. Rock Temples are on the way. He needs to get Storm here though. He's not getting Storm. We've got an Engineering Bather on the way for Biol. Scans has Shuttle on the way. Not sure if this is going to work, because there's Mines, and Mines don't do well against Vultures. I mean, Dark Templars don't do well against the mines, because they still trigger the mines. 
We've got an engineering bay there as well. We have a turret coming in there in the front. So the front is protected by detection. Protected by detection. Sounds a little bit weird to say. We've got command center there on the way for build as well. We've got turrets coming in on the sides. A little bit further away from the hills than usual. Shilla is flying across the map. There's three Dark Tempas in there. We don't have scans in the back. We don't have an academy either. We don't have scans in the back. We don't have detection in the back. He sees the turrets. The turrets finish just in time. He's gonna fly in. Squeezes through. Dark Tempas are gonna unload. Dark Tempas are on the scene. Only, only two Dark Tempas make it out alive. Oh no, there's... Oh, that's so smart. He reveals it. Oh my god. That was beautiful. That was that was really smart. I'm not sure if he did that on purpose, but that was so smart. Even I got tricked. He even fooled me. But there was a turret underneath the engineering base. Scan didn't even see it. He couldn't even attack it. And his plan of going for a tricky Dark Templar play fails because of the trickery that out-tricked Scan's trickery. Basically, trickery everywhere we see. Now we've got a High Templar in there. High Templar's in there. But Scan didn't get Storm, which I mentioned earlier. He didn't get Storm. <laughs> he didn't get Storm. So now we've got a High Templar's there that might save the game. Unable to save the game, but yes, he doesn't have... Oh, this situation is looking pretty bad here for Scan. Great counterattack here from Bjol. Bjol just knows he's got this. Got Templars there in the backside, but no Storm! He's got in Storm! Now he realizes that he didn't get Storm upgrade. He could have stormed and weakened those tanks up pretty, pretty nicely. But now he's just... He's got nothing against these tanks. A couple of Zealots are spawning very slowly. You got Zealot Speed on the way, level 1 attack on the way as well. You have no Reavers here on the scene. He should have made a Reaver to micro with the Shuttle Reaver to defend against the tanks. But that would have been very effective. But now we've got the tanks rolling up, setting up shops, teaching up next to the drones. Probes, probes are running away, but he's going to just take down whatever he can. Bolt is coming in there as well on the backside, taking down the tanks. He's going to just... This game is over. This game is over. Oh, wow. Scan had a great build order going there. I'll be honest. It, it looked very weird at the start, but the... The trickery attempt, honestly, it might have worked, but Bjol just with the big brains himself, great, great mindset there. It all basically worked because of this one turret underneath the engineering bay. Who would have thought? The turret underneath the engineering bay wins in the game. This, this game just went weird game very new different stuff very difficult build order to pull off here from scan also a difficult build order to pull off here from Biol, but it just works and of course scan doesn't have storm which of course also didn't really work out in his favor it really helped Biol secure the win because imagine if Scan had double storm there, he could have just stormed on the tanks while they were trying to break through. He would have maybe killed the tanks, maybe just reduced their HP just enough to allow for the Zealots behind here to take them down. Maybe have enough time for a Reaver to pop out to Reaver Shuttle Micro and take this all down. Who knows? But all I do know is that it, it just didn't happen. And sometimes that's the case. Sometimes things just don't really work out that greatly. Anyway, that's it for today. This is Biol being scanned 3-0 in a small little best of set I hosted, a best of five. Would have liked to see Scan win the game, but you don't always win a game. That's just the way this game works. Sometimes you just lose everything. Doesn't necessarily mean you're better or worse than the other one, but sometimes that's just how things play out. So thank you for watching. I enjoyed this series. I saw a lot of interesting stuff happening. Micro, great multitasking, great brain play from both players. And some trickery. It showed us some new stuff, some new situations. That we honestly never ever see. Maybe for a good reason. Maybe just because people are too occupied trying traditional methods. So RGB for RGB TV. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you around next time when I continue with Gangnam Life against Hamburger Assassin.